In this video, we're going to talk about how volume and pressure affect equilibrium systems. So if we change the volume of a gaseous system. This is going to apply to gaseous systems um, because changing the volume doesn't really apply as well to aqueous systems. Although we could get to that idea using concentration. It doesn't usually come up in the Chem 30. So as we go forward with this, I want you to remember that an increase in volume is related to a decrease in pressure. So if we increase the volume, the pressure goes down, and if you decrease the volume, the pressure goes up. So that relationship we need to keep track of because we're going to talk about a change in volume or potentially a change in pressure, and this little connection is something that you're supposed to know. So before we get further into the video, I want to remind you that if you decrease the volume of a gas and increase its pressure, you get more collisions between gas particles. And more collisions mean more reactions. Whereas if you decrease the volume of gas, you decrease the pressure, then you get less collisions and you will have less reactions because they're less successful collisions. So all of the reactions depend on successful collisions. The, I'm going to take a little side turn here. I always describe this concept this way and it's the least scientific thing I can come up with. But it is really helpful for trying to remember a rule that we're going to go over in the next bullet. So let's uh, pretend that we were going to have a dance. And the dance was for the entire grade in our school. We had two options for a place to hold the dance. We're going to have, let's say, 200 people at this dance. Our option for the dance is the gym or a chemistry classroom. Obviously, the only decent place for that dance is the gym because there'd be nowhere to move if we tried to squeeze everyone into a chemistry class. The, they're all, we'd all be too close together. But if we were trying to have a chemistry class, we had 30 people, would it be better to be in the chemistry room, which fits 30 students easily, or would it be better if we were all spread out evenly around the gym? Well, having a chemistry class where we're all spread out evenly around the gym would be a pretty bad arrangement for the teacher to try to get across ideas. If you had a question, it's going to take the teacher forever to get to you. Um, so smaller spaces are kind of better for smaller groups of people. Bigger spaces are better for bigger groups of people. And that's the idea I wanted you to get a, have in your brain. Because what we're going to say is, if there are an unequal number of gas molecules in the reactants and products, so in this system we have two gases and one, so we have a total of three gas molecules in the reactants and two gas molecules in the products. So if there are an unequal number of gas molecules in the reactants and products, then a decrease in volume or increase in pressure favors the side with fewer gas particles. So if we make the space smaller in this reaction, I expect that the reaction is going to shift this way because we're going to get way more collisions and it's going to favor the forward reaction. But again, if it's a smaller volume, it favors having fewer. Just like having a party or a dance, I want that to be in the right size space. Small group of people, better to have in a small space because everything's in the right sort of spacing. If you increase the volume and decrease the pressure, you favor the side with more gas molecules. So if we've got the gym available, why wouldn't we have a party? So if we end up having a, an increase in volume, the reaction's going to shift to the side with more gas particles. Now, if there was an equal number of gas particles in the reactants and products, it's not going to change the equilibrium because they're going to have the same odds of colliding. Now, in this graph, I can tell that there was a decrease in volume or an increase in pressure. And the way I can tell that looking at this graph is 
all of the gas particles have increased concentration. And so since concentration equals the number of mole, mole divided by the volume, if the concentration goes up, we've got made the volume smaller. If the concentration decreased, then the volume got bigger, right? So if a decrease in concentration is an increase in volume. An increase in concentration is a decrease in volume. So here I can see that all of the chemicals at the same time change their concentration in the same way. So all of the reactants and all of the products all increased their concentration here. So this must be a volume change. We've had a decrease in volume or we've had more pressure. The concentration has gone up. And in this case, because they've had a decrease in volume to make the concentration go up, what that means is that this reaction is shifting this way. You can see that the concentration of sulfur trioxide goes up and the reactants go down because it's shifted this way because the party was put into a smaller space. Okay? So we're going to get more of those collisions going forward compared to the collisions going backwards. The Kc value will be the same. Now, um, for catalyst in equilibrium position, if you had added a catalyst, it changes nothing when the system is at equilibrium. It just speeds up getting to equilibrium. So sometimes you'll see on a graph where you've got like your three or your different chemicals and they go, oh, da, 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 and then nothing changes. Well, if nothing changes, it's probably because they've added a catalyst. So it's kind of a stress or a change to the system, but it doesn't actually change the equilibrium position. There's a nice little summary table of what the, uh, the stresses and the responses to the system are. I encourage you to reference this when you go through and do some practice questions.